past. Tragedy strikes. Accidents happen. Be there when the calls come in. It's back-to-back -back episodes of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Today on Rescue 911, an apartment fire spreads into a deadly blaze and turns a blind man into a one-man rescue team as dozens of sleeping people awake to a frightening reality. If it hadn't been for Felix, who knows? We could have all gone up in smoke. Then, you 911. We begin in a dark room in Northern California on the night of December 31st, 1987. That was a lot of his life was what he had in his apartment. The music, his guitars and things, his little studio with his equipment. Recording was his life. Though blind since birth, 34-year-old Felix Bannon has always been independent. He's lived alone in the same apartment for the past two years with his guide dog, Valdez. Fourteen other people were living in the six-unit building. Most were already asleep that night when Felix returned home from the corner store. It was 2.30 in the morning. Probably nobody was awake, and geez, I remember it being really cold and thinking to myself, boy, I wish I was someplace warmer. Being as cold as it was, I had decided that I would turn on my heater and see if I could get the room that I was in warm enough without using the big main apartment heater. And so I chose to use my little space heater, which was in the room. Valdez, get in here. I just turned on the heater. Your bed, lay down. Valdez was laying in his bed. He just was kicked back, and I was in my pajamas about to go to sleep, and I started talking on the phone. Oh, no, I just, uh, I don't know, I just got in. So I just got back from the store and thought I'd return it. Suddenly, the heater shut off. That's weird. The heater just went off. I thought something was real strange because I had turned it up higher than that. It shouldn't have shut off that quick. I didn't smell anything. As I shut the heater off, I thought to myself, there has to be something really wrong here. And as I reached down to the wall to unplug it, I got about six, eight inches away. And I heard a, a rushing noise of fire. With my light perception, I could tell that it was pretty bright. There was no way I could have put it out. I grabbed the phone and I called 911. A dispatcher picked up the call reporting a fire at 2.26 a.m. The voice on the other end had barely gotten out the address when it disappeared. When we continue, I knew Fred was a heavy sleeper because of his medication. I didn't have much time left. Fred. The floor caved in. He Fred. wouldn't have a chance. Rescue 911, coming up next, only on Discovery Health Channel. Ride the razor's edge between life and death with the people who walk it every day. Trauma, life in the ER, tonight at 7 Eastern, only on Discovery Health Channel. Nevada Fire, stand by for dispatch. A pair of fire trucks were immediately launched. Still inside the burning apartment, Felix was trying to get his dog and get out. The fire had gotten way too intense. It turned from being a wish to a roar. 
It was horrible. I smelled burning plastic. I heard things pop, strange sounds I've never heard before. It's just this feeling of helplessness and frustration and confusion. As I came out for an instant, I felt the cold. But then I don't remember the cold. Richard, wake up! Felix was thinking only of his neighbors. Being blind, I realized that the only thing that I could do was to get everybody out of the building. Some of them he barely knew. Liz Connolly and her family had only moved in a few months earlier. We were asleep, and we heard a knock at the door. Liz, Mike, wake up! All I could do was grab my son and run out the door. My apartment! The temperature outside was below freezing. Felix was wearing only pajamas and in stocking feet. Wake up, Richard! I got a fire! All I saw was smoke pouring out of Felix's apartment. Michael went to see if he could stop it, and it was catching on real quickly. I thought we were actually going to lose everything. Felix then went to warn the neighbors below. He knew they would need special attention. I ran downstairs to get Peter Mendoza out, who has cerebral palsy. I knew that it would take a while to get him out. Anybody in there? Peter's health care aide answered the door. I have a fire in my apartment. you got to get Peter out quick. Peter. I didn't know what was going on. And you hear all the noises. You hear the crackling. You hear the people. I thought my whole apartment was going to go. I thought this was it. With Felix's apartment burning out of control, the tenant in the apartment directly below his was in the most danger. I knew Fred was a heavy sleeper because of his medication, so Valdez and I raced around the side of the building to try to bang on Fred's window. I was frantic at that point. The fire could burn through the floor. Once the window broke, I could hear it catching the roof, and I was going, this whole building might be history. I knew that I didn't have much time left. If the floor caved in, he wouldn't have a chance. Please, Fred, come out. I kicked Fred's door, made a lot of racket, and then he opened it up and just said, what's wrong? When I realized most everybody was out, I just was so shaken by everything that had happened. Things kind of got hazy. Within three minutes of Felix's call, the firefighters arrived. Captain Kirk Richardson took charge at the scene. On arrival, we could see flames coming out the uh, second story window of a two story apartment building. It looked like we could have a problem. The building was charged with smoke. The fire had proceeded down the hallway to the entrance of the living room when I gained entry. Had we gotten there three, four, five minutes later, we might have lost half the building. Officials made sure everyone was safely out of the building. Fire Marshal Tom Elliott located Felix in a nearby apartment. The first time I saw him, he was pretty upset. He got a lot of smoke, and we had to administer some oxygen to help clear his lungs, calm him down. And the thing that he kept saying is, is Peter OK? He kept naming off his friends, are they OK? And we tell him they were OK, and a few minutes later, he wanted to know again. I thought that was amazing for someone to be so concerned about his friends that he just didn't really care about himself or his own belongings. As soon as he realized that it was out of control and he couldn't do anything, and that other people were in danger, he was the first person out the door to make sure everybody else got out. An investigation showed the fire started at a splice someone else had made on the space heater's electrical cord. But because of Felix's quick response, no one was hurt, and only his own apartment was seriously damaged. I had no idea what a fire could do to an apartment. Things, they're not even recognizable. All the tapes that I'd recorded, the things that you get through 34 years of living, in the fire, all that was gone. I just was thinking, where am I going to live? What am I going to do? How do I start over again? Starting over again just was too big a, a mountain to even think of.
Felix lost everything and had no insurance. Two years later, he's put his life back together. The apartment was rebuilt, and he still lives there alone. The one thing that I always remember from it is that nobody got hurt. That meant a lot more to me than the things I had. When I moved back here a month later and I had my own place again, I started to, to feel a little more like there was a, a rainbow at the end of the road. A large music store was responsible for helping me get new instruments and new equipment. They put together a fundraising effort and helped me get most of what I lost. And I'm totally thankful to them for that. In recognition of his selfless courage, Felix Bannon was given the California State Firemen's Association Medal of Valor Award. He is the first blind person ever to receive it. People said, you know, how did you do that being blind? And being blind, to me, wasn't a disadvantage. It wasn't an advantage, but it wasn't a disadvantage. It was just a matter of dealing with what had to be done. I mean, oh, man, the costs could have been immense for lots of other people other than myself. He was more concerned about the people than he was about his equipment. He cared more about us than his things that he had. Got it. What can you say after except thank you? All right. Next. Next, step inside the command center where the calls for help are answered and meet the real-life heroes who save lives. Stay tuned for another episode of Rescue 911. Next on Discovery Health Channel. Real life. Medicine. Miracles. Mr. Shapiro, step out of the car, please.